chapter 15, verse 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. And it says, But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, your name. Father God in heavens, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. We are calling on the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, just to call on his name. We realize that you are a healer. You are a comforter. You are the one who blesses us. And you are the one who keeps us. God, we thank you for another chance to call upon your name. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless our lives tonight that we will hear from you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for bringing us this far. And we thank you, Father, for keeping us on tonight. Lord, we ask you to bless us, Father God, that you, we will reside in your word. That your word will be real to us. That we will understand your word and make your word clear that we will make your word clear to others as you make your word clear to us. It's in the precious, mighty, strong, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. He is. He's my healer, healer, healer. He's our 
Vila. Take this book for me. Give it to Sister Irvin, if you would. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. His name is Jesus. Amen. His Amen. name is Jesus. As we push to end day one, it's amazing how day one can turn into a whole week. <laughs> we're, we're on page number 11. Day one, unit one, day one, and unit one. These lessons are designed to complete them all in one day. That means that you have to wrestle with it all during the week, and, <laughs> and then you come together one day and you finish it all. But we're not in a hurry. We're going to watch what God does. The book is Experiencing God. We're on page number 11. And uh, Sister Irvin, if you would take number eight on page 12, number eight on page 12, everybody else has their assignment, correct? Mm -hmm. Sister Woods have your assignment, everybody has their assignment. Brother Taylor and I will, will close it out together, amen. <laughs> so we're looking, <laughs> we're looking to close out uh, day one, unit one, day one, in unit one, amen? So we're gonna have volunteers come and read their portion and then we're gonna talk about it. Then we have another volunteer come and we'll talk about it. Brother Taylor and I are gonna, gonna put the conclusion on it. Amen, amen, amen. hallelujah, amen. So some things that we need to remember. Number one, the purpose and the goal of this study is to have a life transforming encounter with God. The whole idea of this experiencing God book, this experiencing God group of scripture is to have a life transforming encounter with God. What is life transforming? What are we talking about? We're talking about life transforming. A change. A change. Little boys used to play with um, what was known as the Transformers. They would start off as one thing, and when you push a button, it transforms. It would start off like a car, rolling. Those little boys would push a button, it would stand up like an arm man. It was a Transformer. And those Transformers could do amazing things. I want to say to you tonight, you can do some amazing things if you allow God to transform you. If you allow God to change you. Whenever you are transformed, that means you can do some amazing things for the Lord. Some things that you can't do in yourself. You see, <clears throat> when you looked at the transformer, as long as it was rolling as a car, it was just that, a car. The car couldn't do anything but roll on flat ground. But when the boy pushed the button, that transformer could climb a hill. That transformer could roll like a car. That transformer can walk like a man. It's because the person who owned it had made sure that once the push the button took place, just a push of a button, the transformer became something amazing. It would blow a young man's mind. I mean, young boys would look at that thing and say, Woo, daddy, I want a transformer. Because it became something that it wasn't already. I'm telling you tonight, you can become something that you're not already. The Bible says the greater one is in us than in all the world. We can be transformed. Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind, your heart is what gets you to be transformed. Amen. How many people in the room have been transformed before? Yep. If you're saved, if you're born again, if you know the Lord, 
you have been transformed. But because you're still living, it's obvious that God ain't through with you yet. Amen. You're still living, you're still walking, you're still breathing, you still can talk, you can still do things that you normally can do. That means God is not through with you yet. Amen. And if God is not through with you, you got to do some things. You have to be about God's business. You have to walk with God. So the first thing is, you need to understand that our whole purpose of studying the Bible, our whole purpose of Bible study, our whole purpose of Sunday school, our whole purpose of listening to teaching and preaching is to have a life transformed. A transformed life. The other thing he talks about, that a real Christian a real Christian is looking for a relationship, not a religion. That's on page number eight. A real true Christian is, is caught up in a relationship, not a religion. We're not just practicing stuff to be practicing stuff. We're looking to have a relationship, and this relationship is with a person. This relationship is with a person. We look around in this room, we got robots all in this room. <laughs> the only people that want a relationship with these robots are those who handle them. Those of us in the room today, we don't really want a relationship with these robots. We want relationships with a person, a real person, and that person is God. That person is the Holy Spirit. That person is Jesus the Christ. I want a relationship, and I want that relationship with God himself. Next thing he points out is the fact that God, the Holy Spirit, is our teacher. God, the Holy Spirit, is our teacher. John 14, 26 says, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. On page number nine. The Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things. And not only that, he's our personal counselor. Mm -hmm. Hear what I said? He is our personal counselor, he's our personal teacher, and he's going to teach us everything. Next thing he points out at the bottom of page nine is the fact that the scriptures are God's authority. The scriptures, the Bible is God's authority. We have authority through the word of God. And because we have authority through the word of God, then we ought to use the word of God for our victory. If you're going to be victorious, if you're going to walk with God, you need the word of God. And the word of God and the word of God alone makes you victorious. Our power, our strength, our hope comes through the word of God. On page number 10 at the bottom of that page, there's a story that is written about a farmer. And it's a story written about the preacher, the pastor. The pastor's trying to make it out in the wilderness with the farmer. So the farmer gives the pastor directions. And if he was in Houston today, he would say something like, go down to this road, take a left. Go down till you see the old oak tree leaning over in the road and take a right. Go down till you see a black car sitting on the side of the road. And I always wondered, how do they know a black car going to be sitting on the side of the road? Because the black car never moves. We went to a place called, right before Amit, Amit, Louisiana. Amit or Amit, Louisiana. Right before you get into the Mississippi line. And the girl that was giving us direction, she said, when you get to the fork of the road, you're going to see a bunch of people standing there. She said, when you see the bunch of people standing there, lay right and then take a sharp left. 
And guess what? When we got there, it was a bunch of people standing on that corner. Dusty, dark road. It was a bunch of people standing out that night. It's because she knew the way. When you look at the, the story that is told, Jesus is your map. We understand that the pastor wanted to make it out in the woods and, and go and visit this member. And this member just happened to be a farmer. He says, go left, go right, turn, veer this way, veer that way. And lo and behold, the pastor found out where he was. The next paragraph, he tells the story of the farmer riding in the car with him. And when the farmer got in the car with him, he didn't have to worry about people standing anywhere. He didn't have to worry about the black car on the side of the road. He didn't have to worry about going 500 feet and turning here, left or right, because the man that knew the way was in the, was in the car with him. And the only thing he said is, is turn right up here, turn left up here, gear to your left, merge to your right up here. And he found the way. Why did he find the way? Because the man who was with him knew the way. So this story is told because he's telling the story about Jesus. John chapter 14 and 6, Jesus says, I am the way. Jesus doesn't say that I can show you the way in this particular passage. He says, I am the way. The way doesn't exist other than through Jesus. Isn't that something? Amen. People always ask the question, so are you telling me if I don't trust Jesus as my Savior, I'm not going to heaven? My answer is Jesus is the way. There is no other way than through Jesus himself. You can, you can, you can agree with Oprah or not. The fact of the matter is there is no other way. Sometimes when we get money, we forget <laughs> who the real way is. But for multi-billionaires, if they go into heaven, they're going to have to take the way, and that way is Jesus. Amen. For the poor and the broke, if they're going to heaven, their way is going to be through Jesus. Amen. So the author says, Jesus is the way. Sister Brown, you have my assignments. Who has number four? I do. Who has number five? Brother Miles. Who has number six? Sister Davis. Who has number seven? Sister Who has number eight? I do. Sister Irvin. And and brother brother Johnny Taylor and I got number nine. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, Sister Brown, come on with it, and we're going to. So we're going to finish day one tonight. Amen. We're going to get through tonight if the Amen. Lord said the same. Amen. If it be the Lord's will. We're going to finish this tonight. Day one. Can I just read? Yes, ma'am. When you come to the Lord Jesus to seek his will for your life, which of the following requests more closely resembles the way you generally ask? Okay, everybody has a question, right? It's going, she's going to give us two ways that we're going to ask Jesus for stuff. You are to identify which way do, does it really sound like you. Be honest with yourself. Go ahead, Sister Brown. A. Lord, what do you want me to do? When do you want me to do it? How shall I do it? Where shall I do it? Whom do you want me to involve along the way? And please tell me what the outcome will be. My, my, my. Mm -hmm. Anybody in the room pray like that? <laughs> Lord, what you want me to do? Lord, when you want me to do it? Lord, how you want me to do it? Lord, where you want me to go do it? When you want me to happen and make it happen? And then, Lord, whom do I need to involve to make it happen? And whatever you do, God, out of all the things I've asked you, tell me what the outcome going to be. Okay, the next form of prayer. B, Lord, as you go with me, tell me what to do one step at a time. I will do it. Lord, as you and I walk together. <laughs> Lord, as you go before me. Lord, as we walk side by side. One day at a time, Lord, tell me and I will do it. How many of you pray like that? Anybody? Yep. 
Okay, continues this breath. Isn't the first response typical? We tend to ask God for a detailed roadmap. We say, Lord, would you just tell me where I'm heading? Then I will be able to set my course and go. He says, you don't need a map. You need to follow me one day at a time. This, re this response comes only from those who have learned to walk closely with God and to trust him to care for the details of their lives. We need to come to the place where the second response is how we function. Who knows the way for you to go to fulfill God's purpose for your life? Who knows how you can experience abundant life? God. Jesus said, I am the way, John 14 and 6. He did not say, I will show you the way. He did not say, I will give you a map. He did not say, I will tell you which direction to go. He said, I am the way. Jesus knows the way. He is your way. Amen. 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 Jesus knows the way. But most of all, Jesus is the way. John 14 and 6 says, I am the way. Who's talking? Jesus says, there is no other way to the Father except through me. The other thing I want you to know, there is no other way to peace but through Jesus. Some women tell me, I want to be your peace. Y'all looking at me like y'all hadn't heard that before. Some women say, I know what you're going through out there. I want to be your peace. And the men ought to say, you can never be my peace. <laughs> Jesus is the only one who provides me peace. Mm -hmm. So the brother was like, what woman said that? <laughs> <laughs> People all over the world, they will guarantee you peace. Everybody that's ever been married guarantees peace. For better and for worse. For richer and for poor. And sickness and in health, I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to be your peace. But Jesus is the only way to be peace. That's why the preacher says this, this cord has to be three prone and woven into three. You've got to keep God in it. If you're going to have peace, doesn't matter how quiet she is, doesn't matter how dutiful he is, if you're going to have peace, you need to understand that Jesus is your peace. Amen. If you're going to be peaceful in heaven or in earth, you're going to have to be with Jesus. We promise our children all this stuff when they're young, don't we? Mm -hmm. And our children promise us a lot of stuff. You mess around and get old if you want. <laughs> you will see. They'll tell you one thing and they'll do another. We tell our children one thing and we do another. Because we have no total control, do we? We are not the way. Jesus is the way. So how many of you pray like this? Lord, as you go with me, tell me what to do one step at a time. And guess what, Lord? I'm going to do it. That ought to be our prayer. I said that ought to be our prayer. Mm -hmm. But how many of us pray this way? Lord, I want you to tell me what you want me to do. When you want me to do it. How should I go by doing it? Where should I do it? And whom shall I involve while I'm doing it? And Lord, finally, before I say amen, Lord, tell me what the outcome is going to be. I guarantee you more people, not at this church, but at other church around the corner, down the street, I guarantee you most people pray, Lord, tell me every single detail. But if God tells us every detail, number one, we haven't had a transformed life with him. Number two, we're not walking with him 
day by day. Number three, we do not have faith in what God is doing. Because when you have faith, you don't see what you're doing. When you have faith, things are not going your way. When you have faith, you can see the blessings before you can physically see it. You can see it in the spirit. That's when you trust God. Anybody trusting God for anything right now? And since you've been trusting him for anything, uh, have you shown you everything yet? You know, they like to say in, in, in sports interviews, they like to ask the athletes, what would you say with, to your 18-year-old self? Well, it's easy to say what you're going to say to your 18-year-old self when you're 35. Uh, uh, Kobe or, or, or LeBron or Steph, they can tell you today, well, Kobe can't, but they can tell you at 30, 35 years old what they would say today to their 18-year-old self. But they couldn't tell their 18-year-old self unless they were 35 today and they walked through the years of the 18-year-old. But when we trust God, when we walk with him, we are not even confronted with that. God, I'm going to walk with you every step of the way. Step by step. Back home in Mississippi, they used to, the door used to swing over right at 11 o'clock. The church service, the door would swing over, open, and then the, the church choir would come in. And boy, they knew how to march. They, they, they marched in. Y'all never done that in y'all church? Yeah. The, the choir, I mean, they were decked out. It was, I mean, it was a talent show and a fashion show. The door would fly open and every church in the Mississippi Delta area would sing the same song when they walk in. Step by step, we'll make this journey. Y'all don't know that song? Step by step, we'll make this journey. Look it up, Google it. And when you Google, you may see Markham and St. Jane Choir marching in on it. <laughs> step by step, we will make this journey. The idea here is, is that God, we trust you. God, we're going to walk with you step by step, every step of the way. And boy, they were stepping. Every choir had its identity. And then when they had evening service or on fifth Sunday, they got together at one joint service. Boy, it was really on then. I mean, they stepped. I mean, they dipped. I mean, they walked. They had the same color zone. I mean, we can ask our choir to, to wear the same color. And everybody said, well, I ain't got that. And I ain't going to buy that. <laughs> These people went out and, and spent money to look that way. And they were clean. And the idea was, we're going to walk step by step. And God, we're going to trust you as we walk. And as we walk with you step by step, and as we trust you, we're going to be in the center of God's will. Because it takes faith to be in the center of God's will. Jesus did not say, I will show you the way. Jesus did not say, I will give you a map. Jesus did not say, I will tell you which direction to go. Jesus did not say any of those things, but he did say that I am the way. Jesus says, I know the way. And Jesus says, there's no way other than my way. When we get to that point, we can guarantee ourselves a spot in heaven. Because even salvation takes faith. Who knows a way better than the one who have paved the way? Jesus has paved the way. He says, follow me one day at a time. I told you last week when Jesus says, give us, when you pray, you ask the Lord for daily bread. We ought to ask him for daily bread, not a month of bread. The idea is we stay connected with God. We stay in fellowship with him. We keep walking with him one day at a time, and he blesses us as we need. 
The New Beginning Church is the best example I can ever tell you of. God has blessed us one step at a time, one day at a time, when others had counted us out, and sometimes we counted ourselves out, God just raised up a blessing. Amen. Kept the doors open 31 years. It is not because we got a lot of people with a lot of money. It's not even because we got a lot of people giving a lot of money. And it's not because you got a smart pastor. It's not because of my great preaching. It's only because God has kept us every step of the way, one step, one day, one moment at a time. Amen. Preacher visited one day with a friend of mine. He visited one day, and, and when he left, you know, I can talk about preachers because I'm one. Preacher left, and then he asked his friend, he said, look, how is Matthew affording that building? I looked around the room, and it doesn't look like these people can pay a lot of money. I wish he had said that to Sister Irving. She would have set him straight. <laughs> well, first of all, he doesn't know what we can pay based on what we look like. He doesn't know what God does because God doesn't count people. But God doesn't count numbers. God makes numbers count. That's right. And I'm so glad his friend had an answer for him. His friend said to him, well, God has given that church favor. And I'm glad to report that God has given us favor, favor that we don't deserve, Favor that we cannot buy. Favor that we did not work on behalf of. God has just given us faith. And guess what he does? He keeps right on giving us faith. We just have to trust him day by day and stay in God's will. Number five. Who has number five? Number five. Page number 11. Number five. If you do everything Jesus tells you, one day at a time, will you always be in the center of where God wants you to be? Check your response. These are the options. No. Jesus does not guide people specifically. No. God gave me a brain, and he expects me to use it. Mm. It is much wiser to wait until God tells me all the details before I begin moving my life in a particular direction. Mm. Yes, if I follow Jesus one day at a time, I will be in the center of God's will for my life. Okay, so the first three are pretty much the same, right? Mm -hmm. No, Jesus doesn't guide people specifically. Jesus just does just the general guiding. He has a, a group of people that he leads. Number two, no, God gave me a brain. <laughs> and he gave me a brain, I can use it for myself. That has gotten so many people in trouble. <laughs> Number three, it is much easier to wait until God tells me all the details before I begin moving my life in a particular direction. That's the person that's getting nothing done and doing nothing. When God talks about these talents that he gave the three, the three servants, Jesus tells the story in Mark and Matthew, Matthew chapter 25. And one of them, the one that got the less, that got one talent, he said, Lord, I knew you, you were a hard servant. You reap what you didn't sow. Here's that one talent I give back to you, I give it back to you. And Jesus called him what? A lazy, shiftless servant. He did nothing with what God had given. And the person that's on number three here, that I'm waiting on God to tell me the details, you do nothing. You just sit there. And the fourth one, Brother Miles, yes, if I follow Jesus one day at a time, I will be in the center of God's will for my life. Okay, continue. 
when you get to the place in your life where you trust Jesus to guide you one step at a time, you experience tremendous freedom. If you don't trust him to guide you this way, what happens if you don't know the way you should go with your life? You worry every time you make a decision. You may become immobilized by doubt. This is not the way God intends for you to live. I have found that when I release my way to God, then I immediately respond to everything he tells me each day. He gives me plenty to do to fill every day with meaning and purpose. If I do what he says, I am in the center of his will when he wants to use me for a special assignment. My primary concern should not be what should I do with my life tomorrow, but what does God want me to do today? As you follow Jesus one day at a time, he will keep you in the center of God's will. Amen. 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 Thank you. So following Jesus one day at a time, at the bottom of your book, on page 11, it gives an example of Abram. Who is Abram? Abraham. Abraham. So the word Abram, and you may want to write this down for the test, the word Abram... The word Abram means exalted father. The word Abram means exalted father. E-X-A-L-T-E-D, the exalted father. E-X-A-L-T-E-D. E-X-A-L-T-E-D. Abram, it means exalted father. Abraham means the father of the multitude. Abraham means the father of the multitude. When you look at Abram, he was living in a paganistic society with his family. God said, leave, Abram left. If God told some of us to leave, he'll have to pull us by our tongue, our leg, our arm. Because first of all, he, he was swearing he was accustomed. He was comfortable. He was sitting in. He had set in. And a lot of people are set in their ways. That's why they, they warn folk. They want to get married at a at late age. I'm setting my ways now. Everybody's set in their ways. That's nothing new. The two-year-old, you see him on Sunday. He's setting his ways. Everybody's set in their ways. But when you walk with God... One day at a time, step by step, you are able to be transformed by the power of God. The, the author says, as you follow Jesus one day at a time, Jesus is able to keep you in the center of God's will. We want to be in the center of God's will. We want to be right smack in the center of what God is already doing. Remember, God is at work all around us. God is doing some things when we can't see it. We want to be in the center of what God is doing and in the center of God's will. But you know what that takes? Not my will, God. Your will be done. We have to be in the center of God's will. And we have to say, yes, I will follow Jesus one day at a time. I will be in the center of God's will for my life. We grew up hearing these statements. Jesus does not guide people specifically. We, are, we grew up hearing God gave me a brain. I need to use it for whatever I want to use it for. Bunch of folk in prison and dead because God gave them a brain and they used it for whatever they wanted to use it. And number three, <clears throat> It is much wiser for me to wait on God to tell me every little detail before I move. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine you at work and you waiting on God to tell you every little detail? And that's why when they give you job description, they say, you do this, 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 and whatever else we ask you to. And then they say, when you, you this is your job responsibility, and but then they say, not limited to. Yes? 
when they say not limited to, what they're really saying is that Texas is a right to work state. Hmm. What does that mean, right to work? It means just the opposite of what I, mean, I thought it meant. It's a right to work state. What does that mean? It means that they can fire you at will. They can fire you at will. Don't have to have a reason. You can walk in and you haven't shaven today. You're fired. You can walk in with one leg that you forgot to pull down out your sock. You're fired. And surely you can get fired if you walk in and tell the boss off. It's a right to work state. And you know, when I first heard that, Brother Miles, I thought a right to work means that I have a right to work and I'm here to work and I'm going to do my work. What they're really saying is they got a right to fire you. So you can't sit and wait on God to tell you every little detail before you move because God, even God doesn't operate like that. We have to walk in faith. Amen. We have to walk in faith. And we have to walk in faith one step at a time. And when we walk in faith one step at a time, one day at a time, one week at a time, God leads us and guides us in the text that the author says, to a meaningful and a purposeful life. If you sit and wait on God, you're going to be frustrated. But when you walk with God one step at a time, it sets you free. The author says there's tremendous freedom with walking with God one day at a time. So that thing you've been asking God for, Focus more on God and walking with him than on that thing. Mm -hmm. That person that you've been trying to make sure you do the right thing for them and you're trying to make sure that they do the right thing even when it comes to doing the right thing when it comes to God. Focus more on God. Amen. That's why the Hebrew text says, looking ever to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. That means you glance at your issue. You look at your issue. You see your issue. You acknowledge that I got an issue. You glance at it, but you look to Jesus. You call on him. And when you call on him in the midst of it, when you look to him in the midst of it, he's able to fix it. Y'all do know we're in the middle of a fast, right? And every time you go to the to the to the, the breakfast and you look at your pork and you go to lunch and you look at your beef and then you're tempted to get you some sweets on the side or a Coca-Cola or a drink. Are you are you looking to get some sweets? Looking but not getting. Look to Jesus. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I, I told Sister Davis today, I said, now, that brand new potato pie in the refrigerator. Been cut two times, a whole pie. Two people in the house. I said, you need to freeze that thing. And she had to educate me that once it's unthawed, you don't freeze it up again. I said, I don't know where you grew up. <laughs> you didn't have three hungry boys in the house when you grew up. So that one got to go outside. That one got to be thrown away, Brother David. Because we got 14 more days to go. The fact of the matter is, regardless of how much your pain is, regardless of what's causing your pain, don't focus on the pain. Look to Jesus. Trust them one day at a time. Other people in this room said, Sister David didn't know about no pie. I'd have freeze that pie about six times. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. But in the meantime, I got to look to Jesus. <laughs> Lord, I want to be more concerned about my walk with you than I am about this pie. I pulled the refrigerator over in the back. There's some sprites there. I mean Sprite. I mean cans of rolls of Sprite. Mm -hmm. My mouth was watering. But I had to look to Jesus. 
Because my walk with God is more important to me than a sprite is. We're fasting, right? We want God to do something in us, do something with us that he's never done before. And God, what I'm saying when I'm fasting, what I'm saying, God, I want more of you than more of this. And I want you more than I want this. Ah, my, my. We got to look to Jesus. Number six. Number six. Number six on page number 12. Number six. Number six. Read about Abram's call to do God's will. Notice how much detail he was given before God asked him to follow him. Underline where he was to go and what he was to do. Hmm. So it says, the Lord said to Abram, go from your land, your relatives, in your father's house to the land that I will show you. He says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt and all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, all of the possessions that they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. What did God say? How specific was he? Go from your land. Go where? To the land that I will show you. Amen. Amen. First thing that, that, that leaps out to me is this is this is Genesis 12, 1 through 5. Genesis 12, 1 through 5. The first thing that leaps out at me is Abram was 75 years old. You reckon he was setting his way? You think he was setting his way? We gotta stop using the excuse that oh I'm setting my ways. That's why you gotta get involved in God's ways. He is 75 years old. And when a brother hits 75, he's setting his ways. Yes? When a brother hit two, he's setting his ways. When, when a sister hits 50, she's setting her ways. People are setting their ways, but Abram is a perfect example of a man that's 75 years old. Look what God says. He says to, to Abram, go from your land. Abram wasn't a poor fella. Abram didn't have to go looking for anything. Abram had it all right there. Go from your land. Then what he says, go from your relatives. Go from your father's house. And where am I going? I'm going where he shows me. My, my, my. Have, has anybody left their land, left their relatives, left their father's house and didn't know where you were going? Have anybody rejected the opportunity to leave their land, their father's house, and their relatives? Anybody? We have all faith walkers in the house <laughs> Hallelujah. But check out, whenever you walk with God, whenever you do what God has asked you to do, whenever you do what God has unction you to do, this is what happened. God made Abram a great nation. God blessed Abram. God gave Abram a great name. God made Abram a blessing. God put Abram in a position where he would bless other people. And God makes Abram a promise. He says, wherever you go, I'm going to bless you. Whoever you want me to bless, I'm going to bless them. And whoever curse you, I'm going to curse them. Anybody that find contempt against you, Anybody that talk bad against you, I'm going to deal with them. Anybody that, that, that disturbs you, I'm going to deal with them. 
Anybody that fights against you, I'm going to deal with them. And he says, all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. How many of you in the room have failed to do something in your life because you thought you were going to lose something you had? Anybody? How many of you knew the right thing to do, knew the right place to go, but you failed to do it because you didn't want to lose what you had? Anybody? One person? Boy, I got the saints in the house tonight. I got the saints present. We have chosen to not do things because we don't want to lose what we have. I oftentimes say there are some preachers that I can't hang out with because I'm a risk taker. Yes, Brother Mom? Yes, Mr. Davis? I will trust God to do some things for me that I have not heard of him doing before. I will trust God to take me places I've never been before. I will trust God to protect me in a way that he never protected me in before. While others just trying to stay the course, stay on the radar now, stay on the radar. Stay the course, just stay the course. I remember when, 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 when our funding, our funds were low. Deacon Roberts said, hey man, we didn't make budget. I said, hey, send $100 to this church. He said, you didn't hear me. I said, we didn't make budget. I said, send a hundred dollars to that church. Man, you act like you don't hear what I'm saying. I'm saying we didn't make money that we thought we were going to make and we don't have it to give away. Well, I sent a hundred dollars to that church. And after it was all done, after it was all said and done, he said to me, from now on, I'm not going to question anything you say. When you say write a check, I'm going to write a check. Because God, we may have given away $700, but God poured 18,000 in our laps. Another time we gave away $700, God put another 14,000 in our lap. Even when the enemies tried to stop the church, pulled all the electricity out, 3,000 feet of electricity, <coughs> of copper. The Lord unctioned the body of Christ, even those who didn't know him, to give us $33,000. And when the news reporter came out, he said, he said, Pastor Davis doesn't know how he's going to get the money, but he's praying about it. And people and preachers that I didn't even have to call Call me and say, hey, man, I saw you on the news. This is what we're going to do. And Pastor Jerry Martin says, hey, we're going to give you $2,500 to help you get your electricity up because they just hit us last week. My, my, my. And I told him, I said, Pastor, I, I don't have that kind of money to give you. He said, it doesn't matter. We're going to give you $2,500. Individuals. Even the roofing guy that put roofs on houses, that put a roof on our house, Omega Roofing, called me and said, Pastor Davis, we're sending you $500 for the New Beginning Church. When you walk in faith with God, God will give you favor. Don't get scared because the money gets low. Don't get upset because situations are not what you want them to be. Trust God and move on that trust and act like you trust. Who has number seven? Number seven. Are you ready to follow God's will that way? Check your response. No, I don't think God will ask me to go anywhere without showing me ahead of time where I am going. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yes, I am willing to follow him by faith and not by sight. Many times, as with Abram, God called people to simply follow him 
tomorrow you will read about several. He is much more likely to ask you to follow him one day at a time than he is to spell out all the details before you begin to obey him. As we continue our study together, we will see this truth illustrated in the lives of many people in the Bible. So God is more likely to tell you to follow him one day at a time than he is to give you all the details. He's God. Another, another four categories that says, are you ready? Are you ready to follow God God's way? Are you ready to follow God that way? Are you ready to follow God in such a way that you can trust him? The first answer, no, I don't think God will ask me to go anywhere without showing me ahead of time where I'm going. I don't believe that God is going to show me ahead of time where I'm going. Let me tell you, I was supposed to be in Atlanta, Georgia right now. And the most time I spent in Atlanta, Georgia were two days. I mean, I visualized it in college. Tom Blue and I had already decided we're going to move to Atlanta, Georgia. We're going to be instrumentation technicians. We're going to buy us some park avenues. They're going to be matching park avenues. And that's where we're going to live the rest of our lives. Our sophomore year in college, we had it all laid out. Now Tom Blue is in Dallas, Texas, and I'm in Houston, Texas. If we follow God one day at a time, God will tell us as we go. He won't tell us before we go. I think it was Dr. Ivy Hillier that says that God will give you more on your way than he will before you get started. In the process, you got to get involved in the process. If you're going to be blessed, you got to pray, but you also have to participate. Some people say, I'm not sure at all. But the right answer is, yes, I'm willing to follow God by faith and not by sight. Amen. This Christianity walk is a faith walk. Number eight. This walk of, of Christianity is a walk of faith. It is a walk of faith. Who's coming? Number eight. It's a walk of faith. It's a walk of faith and not by sight. We are walking by faith. Number eight. Read Matthew 6, 33 through 34 in the margin. Then pause and pray. Agree that God is absolutely trustworthy. Agree with God that you will follow him one day at a time. Agree to follow him even when he does not spell out all the details. Agree that you will let him be your way. Many times as, oh, that's my English. If you cannot agree to these now, openly confess your struggles to him. Ask him to help you want to do his will in his way. Claim the promise. It is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. Amen. Thank you. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you or will be added to you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble in its own. Don't worry about tomorrow, because when you wake up in the morning, you got more problems than you had last week. Because sometimes, you know, have you ever heard the statement, when it rains, it pours? Because sometimes issues pile up on top of issues. Struggles pile up on top of struggles. And when struggles pile up on top of struggles, you got to get this thing under control today because tomorrow got something else going on. Tomorrow got its own issues. It has its own struggles. You don't even have to worry about tomorrow's struggles because tomorrow's going to come with its own. 
I know somebody has told you when you come to Jesus, you have no more problems. Yeah. You, you just going to glide on through and Jesus is going to handle all your problems. Look like me, I got more problems since I come to Jesus than I did before I had. But guess what? It's one problem I don't have. I'm not on my way to hell. That's one problem that I got rid of. The second problem I got rid of, that it gets sweeter and sweeter with Jesus, as the old folks said, wrong by wrong and round by round. Mm -hmm. Every day is sweeter with Jesus. Amen. The next thing that I got rid of, when I came to Jesus, I don't have to fight my battle. He's fighting for me. Amen. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. My big brother shows up on the playground. They, they bully me. Jesus shows up on the playground and he takes my fight over. He fights for me. He fights my problems. He fights my issues. So, so the author says, if you're struggling with following Jesus one day at a time, confess your struggles to Jesus. When you get in your, your prayer time and your, your meditation moments, say, Jesus, I'm struggling with this. God, I'm having an issue here. Paul got to that point in Romans chapter 7. He says, every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. He says, that which I would do, I, I choose not to do. And that what I would not do is what I choose to do. I got a war going on within me, Paul says. He said, and this war is in my members. I got one law in my heart, in my mind, and it is the law of God. But every time I look up, there's a war going on within me, in my body, in my members, that's warring against the, the championship in my mind. And then verse 24 of Romans chapter 7, he says, O wretched man that I am. Yes. O wretched man that I am. He says, this word wretched means O beat up man, O burden man. Oh, messed up man that I am, who's going to deliver me from the sinful death that I walk in? Thank God for verse number 25. Romans chapter 7, verse 25 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ. He will deliver me. So I don't have that problem. I got to go to Jesus. I got to trust him. Let's look at the review. As we review this lesson, we need to review it and pray. We need to ask ourselves, what is the personal application? And how does it apply to my life? What should I respond and how should I respond? In the middle of that paragraph, it says, pray about what God wants you to do and respond to it, to that truth. Pray about what God wants you to do. In other words, go to God. God, I know you put me on planet Earth for a reason. I'm in this situation now. Lord, I ask you to show me what to do. And Lord, show me how to respond to it. Because with that, within ourselves, we don't know how to respond. Within ourselves, we got to go to God in prayer and meditation so God can give us light so he can show us the truth. So God can give us light. Finally, this is what he says do. Create a notebook or a journal of what God is doing in your life. If you need some journals, I have some in my office you can have. Create a notebook and record what God is doing in your life. Every now and then, I pick up this gray and white notebook with fish on it. It has fish on it. White fish on a gray notebook. It is what I started recording my prayers in 1985 when I first came to Texas. And I oftentimes look back at my prayer and I laugh about it because God has brought me so far. One of my prayers, I, di I, I distinctively pray, God, give me a Christian supervisor who understands that I need to go to church on Sunday. Mm. Yes, give me a Christian supervisor who understands that I need to be at church on Sunday. I'm 22 years old. That's been 40 years ago almost. 
I look at it and I laugh about it. The other prayer I wrote in that book was, Lord, bless me to make $20,000 a year. <laughs> Y'all laughing about that one. <laughs> Lord, bless me. So you write down what you want God to do, and then you make a commitment of what you're going to do with God. Ask God what you're going to do, what he wants you to do, and then you make sure that that you tell God what you're committed to. Amen. After today's lesson, a person might have a response like this. What was the most meaningful thing, most meaningful statement in scripture that you ran across that spoke with you today? Anybody? What is the most meaningful? Anybody? What's the most meaningful scripture? What stood out to you in this lesson? What made a difference in in this day, this first day of Unit One, Sister Brown? Uh, John fifteen and five. John fifteen and five. I am the vine; ye are the branches. Mm -hmm. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. For without me, you can do nothing. Amen. So you have John 15 and 5. This, this is one of our memory verses. John 15 and 5 says, G Jesus is doing the talking, right? Mm -hmm. He says that I am the vine. Mm -hmm. You are the branches. Mm -hmm. If you stay with me, mm -hmm. if you hang out with me, mm -hmm. if you trust me day by day, then not only will you be fruitful, you will have much fruit. Yes, have you ever heard a person say, oh, it doesn't take all that? They don't know what it takes because they are not walking with him. Right. When you walk with him, you understand what it takes. Mm -hmm. Give your whole self to him. Give your Turn your whole body over to him, your whole mind, your whole heart unto him. Don't say foolish stuff. God gave me a brain and I can do what I want to do. I can think it through my own self. Thing that stands out is the fact that Jesus is my way. He's the only way. I don't need a complete roadmap to stay in the center of God's will. What I need is the roadmap that Jesus gives me as I walk with him one day at a time. Okay, so John 15 and 5 declares that as I walk with Jesus, I'm going to have much fruit. If I stay with him, I'm going to have much fruit. Okay, so this is the homework assignment. We're going to finish this chapter tonight. Hallelujah. Yep. We're going to finish. At the bottom of the page, Brother, Brother Johnny Taylor, mm. I'm going to give you yours for homework assignment <laughs> with everybody else. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. <laughs> what is the most meaningful statement or scripture you read today? Meaning in this whole, the whole first day. What is the most meaningful scripture or statement you read throughout this whole day one? Mm -hmm. Number two, reword the statement or scripture into a prayer of response to God. Reword it as a prayer in response to God. Number three, only three assignments. What does God want you to do in response to today's study? What does God want you to do? You personally. Remember I said this is a personal application. Mm -hmm. This is personal. Mm -hmm. What is God telling you? Is God telling you to walk by faith and not by sight? Your favorite scripture that's in this, this passage or the one that stands out to you? As I follow Jesus one day at a time, he keeps me in the center of the wheel. You got John 15 and 5. You have uh, Genesis 12, 1 through 5. You have Matthew chapter 6, 33 through 34. Choose one. Rewrite it in a prayer. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Rewrite it in a prayer to God. Ask God. John 14 and 6. Which one stands out to you? And then we're going to prepare for day two next week. Day two next week is Jesus is your model. Amen. 
Jesus is your model. Jesus is your example. Jesus is your model. If there's someone listening to us tonight that have not received Jesus as your Savior, the Jesus that is the only way you can receive him tonight, the door of the church is open. And you're receiving him because he made a way on a hill called Calvary. He died for you. He was buried for you. And he rose from you. So bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Amen. We believe if you honestly pray this prayer and you're born again, you're on your way to heaven. We believe that you just need to live a godly life. Attach yourself to a Bible teaching church who loves the Lord and watch God make you fruitful. Are there any praise reports or prayer requests? Praise reports or prayer requests? Praise reports. Prayer requests. Request is for Willie Gordon who lost her husband on today. Man. And also for uh, Doris Bridge for we're praying for Willie Gardner, Doris Risford. I think we can finish day two next week. If everybody's study, everybody be prepared, we can finish day two. We're going to deal with the fact that Jesus is our model. Jesus is our, our model. Jesus is our model. We're going to conclude with the first reality. God is at work all around us. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. That is lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gift, you can mail it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. When we stand to be dismissed. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to follow you, walking with you one day at a time. Bless our lives and bless us to be whole and bless us to be in the midst of your will. Bless us to live an abundant life. We thank you for our gifts. We thank you for money. Thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We ask you to bless every giver and every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. You are dismissed.